this game should have been great. Like imagine you're a big Avengers fan and you see the trailer for this upcoming game and you're pretty hyped. But then you realize Square Enix has been taking notes from EA and the game is infested with microtransactions and glitches. So you do the only logical thing and run. Ignore it for as long as possible and live your best life, queen. Maybe get a hot dog or a girlfriend. It's kinda hot. But eventually, the game catches up with you. Hello, Peter. You fight courageously against the money vacuum this game is, and even our publishers try to protect you, but it's useless. Nobody can stop it. Where am I? We're gonna make you play the entire game. For years now, Marvel has been taking over the world by absolutely obliterating modern cinema by pumping out countless superhero films every year. Which idiots like you and me will eat up even when half of them aren't actually that good. Apart from Guardians of the Galaxy though, straight 10 out of 10 for Groot alone to be honest. We are family. Anyway, when Marvel and Mickey sat down with five different studios, tasked them with creating the best Avengers game possible, and threw a fuck ton of money at them, you'd think the final product would be a straight up masterpiece, on par with the likes of Red Dead Redemption 2, God of War, Bojack Horseman, and of course, Scare PewDiePie. What do you think of when you see that first image? Is it on your screen? Yes. Uh, I look like a devil. But then when the final game came out in 2020, the best year, there was a... A variety of issues. No, 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 no! Wait, 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 wait! Like the initial teaser trailer was received positively enough, I guess. But then when Marvel revealed what the game actually looked like, everyone collectively went, What the hell is that? Because each Avengers in game model looked like what would happen if you punched their on screen counterparts repeatedly in the face. Although, in fairness, to afford Robert Downey Jr., you'd probably need to start a small meth business, so. Fair enough. Plus, the last time they tried to put Chris Hensworth into a game, he looked like this. What the fuck? So I'll happily take this lovely Norwegian man instead. Unfortunately though, the downward spiral didn't end there because the game was quickly revealed to be a dreaded live service. <laughs> Similar to the likes of Destiny and Fallout 76, which is undoubtedly a gaming triumph of its time. <laughs> Then eventually fans were able to get an in-depth look at that succulent gameplay by playing the beta, which naturally was absolutely fucked too. And at this point you start to think that maybe five different studios working on this wasn't such a good idea lads. Fuck up, fuck up, fuck up, fuck up, get out! So with the game falling at virtually every hurdle that not even a PS4 exclusive Spider-Man could settle the fan outrage, Marvel and Square Enix did the only thing they possibly could and on September 4th the Avengers game finally arrived. <laughs> So the game begins with you getting introduced to Kamala Khan, as well as some top class comedy. Why call it the Golden Gate Bridge if it's not golden? From what I can tell, Kamala has entered into a competition to see who can write the best Avengers fanfiction, which is already ticking boxes from what I want to see in my Avengers game. She's a finalist and is a special guest at Avengers Day, a sort of weird convention where the Avengers show merch towards our underage fans. You walk around for a little bit and meet a few of the Tesco value Avengers in some kinda cute, albeit cliche moments, with Kamala fangirling hard, as well as standing up to some bullies with weak hairlines. What you actually do here is go around the convention finding comic books because, sure, and it's basically an excuse for the game to clumsily shove in some plot with resident anger management expert Bruce Banner and scientist George Targaryen discussing the new energy source they're unveiling today known as Terrigen. And much like my mental health, it's unstable as fuck. They attempt to unveil this new mineral which will power their new flying headquarters, the Chimera, but of course, before they can do any of that, something blows up, the Avengers jump into action, you play as all of them for a little bit until the Chimera explodes and Captain America is presumed dead. San Francisco is also coated in Terrigen Mist, which can cause some nasty side effects if you breathe it in, resulting in a lot of people developing strange superpowers and mutations, being branded inhumans. Yeah, this isn't fun. I don't think it did very well. Cut to five years later and everyone hates the Avengers now, blaming them for the events of A-Day, and as a result, they've all kind of just disappeared. In their absence, AIM has pretty much taken over everything, with big shock, George being in charge. Outlawing superpowers and capturing any Inhumans they can in order to find a cure for bad review scores. We catch back up with Kamala and their uh, low-res posters, as we find out some horrifying truth that Kamala is a Redditor now. Through 
her search for some Reddit gold, she finds a link to an archived AIM account, which she somehow is able to hack because she's obviously a massive Mr. Robot fan. She looks around for a little bit until she finds some shocking footage of what actually happened during A Day on the Chimera, and then AIM quickly bans her from the server. They also send drones to her location, meaning Kamala has to go on the run throughout the city, leaping from rooftop to rooftop with her big stretchy arms. Oh yeah, Kamala has superpowers now. Nice. To be fair though, this whole sequence does do some pretty decent world building, showing how AIM runs the place with an iron fist, how far the Avengers have fallen, and directly seeing how people have been affected by A-Day. My kid brother was there on A-Day. He wrote some dumb stuff about Captain America. It wasn't Cap's fault. It's all their fault! He turned all freakish and purple! And then they took him away! Eventually Kamala gets captured by AIM and is confronted by George Tarleton, who over the past five years has clearly spent his time watching only the finest content, as he now has over 200 IQ points. He pretty much says he can cure Kamala and offers to help her, sweetening the deal in the process by throwing in some platinum. But after thinking about it for two seconds, Kamala says, No. The chase continues as you end up fighting several of AIM's androids, which, uh, becomes a recurring theme in this game. My name is Connor. I'm the android sent by AIM. You inevitably destroy all of them and manage to escape AIM for a little bit, with Kamala then realising she can't go home now because AIM would just bomb her house. So she makes the grown-up decision to just go to Utah and hopes to find the resistance, but instead conveniently discovers the destroyed remains of the Chimera and one very angry green man. You get in my face with that, I'll beat your goddamn ass, you son of a bitch! Once he's eventually calmed down though, you speak to Bruce Banner trying to convince him to help you, but after the events of A-Day, Bruce has just became a depressed mess, being unable to forgive himself for his past mistakes and wants absolutely nothing to do with you. That is until Kamala shows him the super secret footage she found and next thing you know you're driving around in an RV listening to some banging tunes. This leads into the main plot of the game with Kamala helping to reassemble the Avengers in order to take down AIM and Mr. Big Brain. Unfortunately though, the Avengers here aren't great. Now don't get me wrong, there are some good character moments here and the different dynamics between certain Avengers is kinda interesting to see, especially the budding romance storyline between Tony and Steve. But besides that, the Avengers are just really bland. Wow, this is dreadful. It's like a bland pile of worms. Seriously, it's like they took every aspect that makes these characters compelling in the films or comics and just set them on fire. Captain America is just a big bland piece of bread with less personality than a sex doll. YES! It's a sex doll! Black Widow is just kinda there, offering about as much to society as her TikTok does. And I will not look at a single boob! Thor just isn't in the game, like he fully doesn't show up until the very end of the campaign when the plot needs him and his luscious beard. Bruce, as discussed, is just massively depressed, probably spending his spare time listening to Coldplay on repeat. Although, to be fair, whenever he transforms from the Hulk back to Bruce, he does get this pretty sick jacket, so that's got to cheer him up a bit. Kamala is just really boring and incredibly uninteresting. Like, you can argue she brings a lot of heart to the game, but realistically, she's a walking cliche who's insanely predictable. Oh, I just want to be a normal girl. Shut up. Unless you're Tobey Maguire in Spider-Man 2, I don't want to hear it. Although, I do have a special place in my heart for her dad. What a man. When you were born, your brother said you had googly eyes. What? And lastly, we have Iron Man, otherwise known as Nathan Drake from Uncharted. So Tony Stark here is voiced by Nolan North, whose lovely voice has been featured in a fuck ton of things, but most notably in the Uncharted series as Nathan Drake and his portrayal of Deadpool in the Deadpool video game. Nice dick. Now to be fair, I think this is probably the most authentic representation of any character in this game, but whenever he talks, I'm definitely not hearing a billionaire with over 300 IQ points, I'm hearing Nathan Drake. Although in saying that, I do kinda like him. Don't get me wrong, he's a massive dickhead with an ego the size of Switzerland, but I think there's a weird charm to him which I actually liked even if it is just generic funny man dialogue. Pinto. Tony also gets a bit of a spotlight put on him throughout this game, having a few missions dedicated to him just flying around the place with ACDC being blasted in the background. Which makes me think this game would have been 10 times better if it was just about Iron Man. It also helps that he's by far the best character to play as. Now each character does play differently, having unique movesets like Cap utilising his giant frisbee, Floor hits people with his hammer, and Hulk just throws people into oblivion. As well as that, each character has a few special abilities that you can use, like Iron Man's Hulkbuster armor, and Hulk's earthquakes. Yeah, so long story short, every character at the very least functions differently. 
great job lads. But to be honest, I didn't really care to play as any of the other characters because as I said, Iron Man just blows them away. He has three different projectile weapons with repulsors, lasers and missiles which are all really fun to use, add a great deal of variation to the combat and you can upgrade each one of them as you go along. You can also quickly and efficiently switch between these weapons to fit any type of situation you've gotten yourself into. So for example, if you're surrounded by enemies, you can use your lasers for some lovely crowd control. Tony can also fly about the place, meaning that ranged enemies like drones are a lot easier to take down with unique flight based attacks. And if stuff ever gets too chaotic, you can just do the sensible thing and uh, leave. So yeah, as far as Iron Man goes, he's pretty good. Just a shame about the rest of the game though. First things first, on a technical level, this game performs about as well as your Uncle Barry does after a few pints. The frame rate slogs to an absolute crawl 50% of the time, regardless of whether you're actually playing the game or watching a cutscene. On top of that, the loading screens take about 16 weeks. And yeah, these issues are probably resolved on the next gen versions, but a PS5 right now is harder to find than my dad. So I'm stuck with my PS4 sounding like a helicopter while it struggles to try and keep this game at a decent frame rate. <sighs> but even when the game is running at a smooth 30 frames per second, you still can't tell what in the ever-loving fuck is going on, because the majority of missions just boil down to you either standing in the same spot for 5 minutes, or having to beat up a collection of computers while the game throws an entire Amazon warehouse worth of androids at you. Now I'm not saying this game is a clusterfuck, but this game is a clusterfuck. There is so much shit happening on screen at any given moment that you genuinely can't tell what's going on. It just feels like sensory overload as every battle turns into a jarring mess of particle effects, massive explosions, and some fine robot ass. Connor, the fuck are you doing? Coming. This issue is only further exacerbated due to the majority of levels taking place in these small, claustrophobic aim bases that doesn't work at all with this ADHD riddled combat, meaning you become easily disorientated to say the least. I'm blind. The thing is, if you can somehow look past all of this, the game does have an insanely deep combat system. Like as I said, each Avenger has their own intricate playstyles with a plethora of combos, beautifully animated attacks, and some sharp draw lines. Okay, the sound design could be improved so it doesn't sound like I'm punching a can of monster, but overall the combat does have a huge amount of depth to it, which is ultimately ruined by the abundance of shit happening on screen which just breaks my poor brain. The traversal in this game is also uh, a little awkward, like Captain America is pretty fun to run around as because he's clearly been watching his Dying Light parkour compilations, but the way other characters move around just feels really clunky, like Hulk is just super janky at the best of times, especially in small places. Kamala and Black Widow aren't bad but they definitely don't obey the laws of physics, and the way Iron Man and Thor fly around is fun, but in comparison to the on-screen counterparts, it's a bit weird seeing Iron Man go from breaking the sound barrier to uh, going about 5 miles per hour. I think what I've noticed the most here though is that this is a game of two halves. The first half being filled with these linear action packed set pieces, similar to the likes of Uncharted or Marvel Spider-Man. The other half though is this underdone looter shooter with the most mind-numbingly repetitive mission structure I've ever seen. Consisting of the game just telling you to go get something from a nearby aim base, and while you're there have fun fighting waves upon waves of generic androids and probably blowing up your local PC or too. And don't think I don't see you sitting there thinking, oh it must get better when you're playing with all the Avengers, because in the wise words of Robert Downey Jr, you're a fucking idiot. The very concept of teamwork is utterly non-existent here, and regardless of whether you're playing with your friends or the CPU, it always just evolves into a bunch of weirdos incoherently punching mechs for 5 minutes straight. Also on the topic of enemies, they don't change at all. Like you'd expect as you progress through the game for the enemies to slowly get more powerful with unique weapons and upgrades, meaning you'd have to figure out different ways to tackle them other than the usual punching methods. However, here halfway through the game, the enemies just turn into massive bullet sponges, with the only noticeable difference being they have about 10 times more fucking health. Now in order to combat this steep incline in difficulty, the game forces, I mean encourages you to go out your way to get quite frankly the worst thing Square Enix put into this game, gear. Now like many live service looter shooters of its kind, Avengers puts a heavy emphasis on you grinding out side missions and faction quests to get better gear for each character, to the point where it's a pretty integral gameplay loop as you can see by this beautiful graph I made. There's just one small issue here, the gear sucks. See normally you'd grind for hours to get a cool new weapon or some sick looking armour that would give you a different perk like negating fall damage. Oh my word. However here, 
I have no clue what the gear does. I mean, I guess it makes each character somewhat stronger and gives you a few perks, but besides that, it doesn't do anything else. It doesn't change up anything cosmetically, it doesn't give you a new shiny weapon, it doesn't give you any new attacks or takedowns, just a couple nice looking holograms and some redstone. Honestly, there's just no incentive for me to grind to get this better loot. Like, if I'm going to waste hours of my life to get better gear, at the very least I'd expect to make Iron Man look like a mix between Cyberpunk, Deus Ex, and fucking Cthulhu. But of course the game doesn't let you do any of that because how else would they get you to spend your entire life savings on some beautiful microtransactions? Allowing you to spend your hard earned cash on such great items like these new kinds of takedowns, these inspiring emotes, or a range of some of the ugliest suits I have ever seen in several different colour schemes. Okay, admittedly some of the skins are pretty cool, like this dazzling Iron Man one, however for the most part they are painfully uninspired, look horrendous, lack any kind of creativity, and... oh... Oh, that is a very poor choice of hats. Yeah. Now, despite the majority of this game being, uh, trash, a lot of people point towards the game's story as being its only saving grace, and I'm here to tell you, those people are filthy liars. At this point, I don't think it will shock you when I say the story, for the most part, is unbearably generic, just following the basic superhero formula we've seen a dozen times before. Yeah, the Avengers splitting up is an interesting plot point, which I think if the game explored more in depth and looked at how each character dealt with it, then it 100% could have won the Emmy. But as it stands, the story just quickly becomes a boring paint by numbers origin story filled with characters that are about as lifeless as my granddad's. It just isn't engaging in the slightest, not to mention you can see big plot twists coming from a mile away, like how Ames cure for humans is secretly a poison and that Captain America is actually alive, just imprisoned on the moon for reasons. There's a heavy reliance on the tension between each Avenger to drive the plot forward, but it doesn't really work because the split second any kind of conflict happens, I can guarantee the next second they'll just kiss and make up. The game just drags on and on, featuring some of the weakest boss fights I have ever seen, with the likes of Abomination just appearing for no reason, and three giant mech fights like I'm playing a Marvel inspired Robot Wars. Until eventually, once you've gathered all the Avengers, you make your big final dramatic stand against AIM and MODOK. Oh yeah, George just changed his name to Modoc near the end of the game for no reason. Yeah, I have no energy to fucking care anymore. Anyway, you face him in a final boss fight, so unnecessarily long and tedious that I think a better use of my time would be jumping into a hydraulic press. But after you've gotten past being bombarded by pure trauma, Kamala unlocks the power of human growth hormones, which gives her the strength to defeat Modoc and save the day, thus ending my suffering. <laughs> As it wraps up with Kamala finally getting reunited with Abu, the Avengers fixing their reputation, an ending scene which teases a second game that I pray doesn't see the light of day, and by the time the end credits rolled, I felt completely numb inside. Now since Marvel's Avengers came out, it hasn't been received uh, too favourably, and over one year on, I don't think much has changed. The entire main campaign is horribly balanced, as the game loses focus on all of its Avengers trying to juggle between them about as consistently as my upload schedule. You're trash. And I get the developers have been trying to fix these issues, with the latest Black Panther DLC clocking in at around 8 hours and keeping the focus mostly on Black Panther throughout, which is a step in the right direction, but it feels like I'm taking that step after I've already been hit by a 4x4. It just doesn't matter how much free content Square Enix throws at this game, because at its core, Avengers is fundamentally broken. The mission structure is insanely repetitive, the gameplay is a grindy mess which can go from peaceful to utter chaos in 10 nanoseconds, the gear makes me want to drink bleach, and overall the game just leaves an awful taste in my mouth. Maybe when the long awaited Spider-Man DLC comes out, the game will be worth investing hours of my life into it, but until then, I'm just going to pay for Richard Branson's second island by getting these Virgin Media skins. We truly do live in a society. Yeah, that's funny.